Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. This will be part three on this uh, dual clutch transmission for uh, 2011 BMW 335iS with an N54 engine. As a uh, manufacturer recommends to install the clutch, you need to put the transmission upward and I ran obviously all the fluid. Um, I have a new clutch in here, so I'm going to put the tool, which I now have. This is from Bone Tools and you have the bar two four sorry two three zero four hundred and that's just what it is so we're going to remove this this is just for delivery uh kind of a tool to make sure the clutch is in place and then you need to put this here and it has to be flushed the way this one is all right so this is very important as i showed you before and this is why it's all good with this now we can see that now the tread doesn't move or it doesn't move as much as, as with the other tool you know because this one has four pins so these four pins are going to keep that tread centered in the meantime we put them in the transmission all right so let me get the camera on the other side probably a best shot for you guys so just bear with me one second like that you guys will be and first raw all right so let me get you as close as possible yakai is helping me here all right so what bmw tells you to do is make sure that you fit the clutch in and if you see the oil pump moving that might be better if i get you a little higher so you guys can see that gear as well got you moving your hand yeah perfect right there so they can see the gear and i'm going to move right there all right so you guys can see this gear this is the oil pump so if you feed the clutch and that is spinning as you spin the clutch in everything is going normal i already lubricated the ring lubricated the rings and that uh, a needle bearing on there so this should be all good to go ready to install Okay, now I sit. Uh, the only thing is, I'm gonna have to pause and put actually blocks in the transmission because right now I'm sitting on the flange and that is not letting us move. So give me one second. All right, move the camera now. Put some wood uh, blocks under the transmission so the rear flange can move. And let me see if, if I make sure that that is moving. I'm going to get a a mirror. I was actually thinking of using a boroscope to make sure everything's going nice and smooth in here, but it seems like it might not be necessary. Let me take a look. And this will be just me looking at it. Sorry if I'm in the way. Well, the first gear is not even there yet. So we might gonna have to shake it a little more. Very sharp edges in here, so be careful when you're installing. okay now it's see you have to shake it in on until you see the gear moving i can see now the gear moving completely that means that the clutch is all the way in it still needs to get into the needle bearing but that's probably going to be on the last eight turns then we torque i have the torque ready to 20 newton meters but like i said i can see the gear moving i want to see Sorry if I'm always on the way, but I want to see this uh, going down. Trying to make the mirror move so I can really see the what I need to see. Should probably put that 
boroscope camera here. See if it's getting in. Because I can see the gear moving, but I think it still needs to go a little more. Now let's try to tie this up. And for that, the only thing that I'm seeing that is not like all the way in is that needle bearing. It looks like it's like halfway through. Reading the instructions, it says that if the pump gear is moving, that means it's engaged correctly. Let's see the height of that gear compared to the other one. It's like halfway through. So let me try to move this a little more. See if we get any difference. Mm, it spills actually really solid as far as in. So let's try to tight. One turn, two turn. Or, sorry guys, uh, we got interrupted by a call. I'm using my phone as usual. All right, so we said two turns and I was about to do the third. Four five and a lock so that's pretty easy to see right so that's exactly what the actual repair information said and yes now i cannot see the uh the needle bearing on the bottom which is perfect and the two gears are aligned which is the bottom gear that you have on the under the clutch to the actual um pump gear they're completely aligned so that's perfect and let's now short that to specs All right, so 20 Newton meters. This is a 22 for the tool that I'm using. And that's it. It's a very slight torque. torque. So we're done. All right, guys, this is uh, part three. I'm not a st completely stopping the video, but I will just show you probably pictures or maybe a little bit of the process of, of installing the transmission. Uh, we don't need it. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple, but uh, some of you requested for me to show the actual uh, clutch adaptation and all the stuff that needs to be done after you install the transmission. So I will be doing that. The cover in here is just very easy to, to install. Just make sure, because I've seen, you know, other people installing it in the cover. Let me actually get the cover and show you what I'm talking about. I don't have the actual arena installed in it, but you will be able to see what I'm talking about. Actually, this comes with the ring. Perfect. All right, so this is the new cover. Filled with a sticker. So you have an arrow here, but there is no other arrows around at all. So you just want to make sure that you put a mark on the on the actual bell housing where this arrow is. So like that, you can install it correctly. I will use some silicone grease in here and then install everything everything back i will i'm going to put some transmission fluid in here so this is not 100 percent dry because this is a wet uh cloth system so let's try to lubricate a little bit with the fluid that we're going to use and then you can install everything back put the foot in the car and you're good to go all right guys uh, so i will be back a little forward in the repair All right, guys, uh, car is all put together. I just connected the battery and I'm actually now starting to read the information from ISTA. And I have you next to me while I'm doing this. Let me try to stray the phone a little bit. You guys can see and I can work as usual. Hopefully it's not too weird of an angle. I can actually do that a little bit to get you a better view. Some people don't like recording from a screen, but I cannot put the screen recorder in here. So, all right, so we got two faults. Control unit under voltage and switch back rest. So that's not my problem. Um, let's go over to vehicle management. 
service functions, powertrain, transmission control, teaching functions. We got adjustment. Let me see what we got in adjustment. Data adjustments, mechatronics. Format fault memory, which flushing function, we already did that. Fluid level balance compensation with dual clutch. So let me see what we got here and that uh, start communication test. The following service function must be performed in any case of replacement or repair, replacement of clutch, and after all work on an open transmission, all balance and reset the torque characteristic curve, curve. Hopefully you guys can read that in there. Teaching valve characteristics curves, clutch adaptation, and parking lock hook test. Replacing the old pump. Yes, we did. Just in the mechatronic data, transmission data from the existing mechatronics is read out and stored after replacement in the new mechatronics. We don't need to do that because this is a used transmission. So we need to do that oil balance and retort, but we don't have to do the replacement of the mechatronics data because that's from when you do a brand new transmission. Although we need to do the clutch adaptation and the teaching values and all that stuff, but not adjusting the data. The data should be the same vehicle, so we don't need to do that. Again, this is a used transmission. You, you only do that when you are uh, using a brand new transmission. So let me close this one. And we're gonna do, <clears throat> let me close that one again, that adjustment. Let me, oil balancing is here. Let me go back to even here, because I want to take a picture for myself so this is going to be the stuff that we need to do, except for the data. So again, better to take a picture so I can use it as procedure steps, replacing the old bounds and teaching. So we're gonna go back <clears throat> and we're gonna go over to oil balancing All right, let's see what it is going to do. Communication with the control unit is okay. Read corresponding repair instruction before starting the all adaptation procedure. All right, Kyle, carry out the level check in accordance with instruction. Carry out level check. On the twin gear running, check fluid changes is not required, so we need to check the oil. I put oil to start to come out of the field. And that's all I can do without starting the vehicle, but we need to do the oil balances first. Test, the testing and filling procedure must be completed before transmission oil temperature is rich. All right, so it needs, we need to do that first. Let's see. Yeah, that is tied. So we need to check the oil first. <clears throat> and it says the testing and filling procedure must be completed before the transmission oil temperature reach 40 degrees. If the temperature exceed is reached and no oil has emerged, insert the oil adjustment screws and repeat the testing and filling procedure with a cool it down. Okay, so, all right, so I'm going to fill the transmission first and I'll be right back guys, because that's what is necessary to do first. And again, this is pretty easy. Race a car, start a car, check the fluid before it reaches 40 degrees, uh, uh, very easy. And all you need to do is, that's the oil plug. As long as oil comes out of here, the transmission is, is good. If you no know oil comes, then stop the engine, fill it up and redo it. I'll be right back. All right, guys, looking at this um, service procedure, actually, I think I need to run this one in order to do the full uh, oil balance and the fluid level checked. Transmission fluid temperature at a start less than or equal 32 degrees. The engine must be running, condition and pre running condition, parking lock, transmission fluid temperature readout, operator raises the engine speed. So the engine has to be running. I'm going to put a, a pen under this transmission so I can remove the plug to recheck the flow very quickly. So I also put a, 
a ladder on the side of the car so I can come down and start a car because it is some uh, requirements that I need to do. Parking lock pole is automatically engaged. Transmission fluid temperature is read out. Operator race, raises the engine speed. The engine speed must be remain about 2000 RPM for one minute to ensure even distribution of the fluid within the transmission unit. Check to determine whether the accelerator pedal is depressed. The accelerator pedal must not be depressed from this point onward. So I actually got to read this all. Um, I'm going to have to get somebody here. All right, I got Natalie uh, helping me here with doing the procedure. So we're going to, uh, let's just start a car. All right, we're going to start a procedure. I'm gonna check the fluid. I'm right now under the vehicle, checking the fluid level. Make sure it's coming out. And it's not turning off. All right, so that means I have to add more fluid which is good, so. All right, the transmission is now full. Follow the sequence, is in park now? Okay, perfect. Uh, but, okay, we need to raise the idles at 2,000 for one minute. 12.53. We can see the transmission temperature here. Okay, let it idle. Now this is the last oil checked. If oil emerges from the plug, which I'm checking right now. Again, I'm sorry guys, I cannot show you all this, but you know, it will be too much of a back and forth with just to show you oil dripping. Removing the plug as we speak. Still needs a little more fluid. And this is very important to do. Because before it was full. Right now it's a little oil, a little low, which is that's what we're doing, right? You want to do this with transmission before 40 degrees. All right, we got all emerging now. And it's just barely dripping, which is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, very close to the muffler. And after this, we're going to do the oil compensation. And as you can see, well, you cannot really see, but I got Natalie helping me up there. Otherwise, it would not be possible to do it this quick. All right, so oil level is perfect. Now we're going to do the oil adaptation. 
and we're fine 29 degrees so yes no air condition or nothing right okay perfect All right, corner on temperature, 33 degrees. Raise it up to 1,000. You can see it's seeing the RPM change and all that stuff and it's counting the seconds. We're okay as far as temperature wise, 33 degrees is perfect. Remember, you gotta do all this before 40 degrees Celsius. I think we're gonna be okay. Ready to go? We already adjusted the fluid. Now the engine speed is increased. No longer press. All right, just let it do what it's going to do. Do we have to pull for cure? It's going to do it by itself. On completion of the all adjustment procedure, briefly press the brake until the end of the function is performed. Apply the brake just softly. All right, perfect. All right, thank you. Uh, let me just see what else we, need, we can do. Clutch adaptation. No. We have no full codes. I can actually go and check, but I doubt it. All right, so put them in neutral and hold the brake. Don't press the accelerator at any time, okay? All right, we're going to start the adaptation. I can definitely hear the transmission do it in the scene. Yep, that's the clutch adaptation. This is very important, especially after we replace the clutch. This has to be done. Otherwise, the clutch will get burned. If you don't replace the clutch, you don't have to. Transmission was already done. You can just do all the oil balancing and the oil, you know, level. But when you replace a clutch, you need to do this, especially, you know, after an oil pump and everything, the clutch has been carried out. All right. Perfect. Turn the uh, engine off. Leave it in neutral. All right, next. Ignition is on, right? The ignition is on? It's a neutral and the brake is applied. Okay. Perfect. Uh, reset torque, reset curve. 
propagation, value of curve, transmission adaptation. Let's do the reset torque characteristic curve. Because that is on the list. Uh, remember the pictures that I took? And that's what I always do. Teaching new bow characteristic curve. So that's what we need to do. So we got reset and gauge. Reset teaching values. Okay, so we have to go into gauge. Transmission and control unit teaching values characteristic curves. So this is what we need to do. And it's gonna tell us what to do. Start the engine, put them in. Activate parking brake. Applies the brake and is on neutral, right? Okay, raise the speed up to 2000. With all that, yep. Mm -hmm. Ready? All right. All right, perfect. All right. All right, leave it in neutral and turn the engine off. Ah, uh, yes. All right, ignition is on. Release the brake and no, release the brake and put them in neutral. And uh, I mean, uh, ignition. Ready? Rally save. Perfect. All right. So that was perfect. So the next thing we need to do is the clutch adaptation. You already did the clutch of parking lock, hook test. Uh, put them in park. Release the brakes. Yeah, parking lever is perfect. Let me see what else we need to do. Replacing the mechatronics, we didn't do that, so we don't have to do the gearbox, uh, gearbox adaptation. We're only going to do oil balancing, teaching values, close up adaptation, or parking lock hook, hook test, which I did, so that's it. All right, guys, so this is what I need to uh, perform based on a used transmission, and now I'm going to take the car for a test drive. Thank you so much, Natalie. She is Natalie. <laughs> Hey guys, I know the audio is not going to be the best because I don't have my microphone, but I'm doing a test drive on the vehicle. Uh, as you can see, this car has very low mileage, 59,000, and that's a 335 IS. This is like brand new. The customer is going to be really happy. I usually do a seven mile test drive myself, and then we have a person in the shop which is in charge of uh, putting, you know, 30, 50, whatever miles we require after a repair. It all depends on the repair. Yeah, as you can hear, shifting super nice, super smooth. I am very happy with the repair. I'm very happy with that used transmission that came from LKQ. Uh, very A quality grade and it was really, really good. I just did a recommendation because I don't want to, you know, uh, have so much of a expenditure on a customer and don't put, you know, the old pump and the clutch. It's, we're already out there. Let's just get it done like that. He's gonna have a beautiful car because the car is in really really nice shape this is for i think his name is julio that's all i'm going to say and uh, he's going to be very very happy i always do i'm a very proud person i am proud of my work and i'm very caution of you know spending money on customers cars uh, recommendations when i do a recommendation is because that's exactly what is necessary to to replace and uh, i know that he's going to be very happy this is a very beautiful car. All right, guys, uh, this will be the end of the video. Thank you so much for visiting the channel. I hope that you guys learn from the intricate situation that is uh, involved on a transmission like this and what you need or not to do. Uh, as usual, thank you so much, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.